here. And once I've got it done on the paper part, and then we actually photocopy the paper onto this, this clear overhead transparency film. This is the stuff we use in high school for overhead transparencies. And this will go through a copier or a laser printer just like paper. So put it right down in the paper tray, photocopy that image directly onto this clear acetate. Once uh, you've got this all done on the clear acetate, there's a new vinyl in the in the uh, sandblasting arena that is a very very tough new chemical formula, and this stuff is only three thousandths of an inch thick. But we're going to photo expose now with ultraviolet light the lettering that I want to sandblast onto this vinyl in just 17 seconds. So I just cut a piece of it to fit the pattern. And I'm going to do both the spine as well as the front of the book right here all in one stroke. And all you have to do now is put this in here and photo expose it with ultraviolet light. Just turn that on for 17 seconds. Now give or take a second or two, it's not too serious one way or the other. And when you've got about 17 seconds of exposure in here, then all we've got to do is wash it out with hot water. Now keep track of the time a little bit as I'm going through here so you can realize how long, how quick I can do this. Now once I've got this all exposed with ultraviolet light, we've got a high contrast clipboard. It's just a really nice, hard white plastic that I can clip the pattern to and then also a uh, spray wash comes with our package to begin to spray wash and clean it out. Now if you kind of watch what's going on here and see how this is turning out as I spray it, where the ultraviolet light didn't hit the film it stays water soluble and will wash right out. And as soon as it's clean, that's where we're going to sandblast through. So you just very quickly, it takes about two more minutes to wash this out. Okay, let's have you come up here close and see. See how I've washed that? Wherever it's white now, as soon as that's all cleaned out of there, then my pattern is completely finished. So it isn't too difficult to wash it out. And then all we do is let this vinyl dry now. Now I've got the crystal piece already done. I put a line here, kind of a target line to help me line it up and square it on the surface of the book. And then this is the spine here. I've got the pattern already done and then I hit it with a hair dryer today to hurry it and dry it. But I can also just let it dry. I usually make my patterns and let them dry overnight. Then once the patterns are done, all I've got to do is position these guys now and stick them in place. Now once I've got everything kind of lined up, uh, the nice part about these little marks is they help me target exactly where this pattern needs to go. So all I'm going to do is put the beams of those little arrows right on that line and then lay this down carefully. You can't get any bubbles underneath it, but there's some magic about this film that keeps you from getting bubbles underneath it. So now comes the tricky part. I've got to line this up and get it exactly on the front of the book cover and line it up edge to edge so that it's not skiwampus at all. You just can't screw this part up. You lay it down and after you've done a few of them you'll get more and more capable of seeing exactly where this needs to go in order to get it lined up perfectly. And then once you got that baby on there and now we just press it into place. Now we're going to rub it firmly into place and then I've got to take the carrier page off. Now there's a final covering layer of clear plastic on top of here and all you do is catch this edge and flick it a little bit like this and it'll just peel that carrier page right up and then you have to tear that off quickly. And bingo, now this is all covered here. But wherever it's clear is where it's going to shoot. So now I've got to tape it and mask it off and then I'm going to shoot shot real tiny little flakes of metal against this and wherever it hits the purple it just bounces off wherever it hits the clear it's going to go through and cut whatever is underneath it it's just magic stuff all right I've got it all taped off now put masking tape over anywhere else that I don't want the sand to get to accidentally I've got the spine outlined and, and isolated here 
And we're going to go in now and sandblast, and I'm going to show you. And sandblasting is the cool part. It's just so amazing at how fast it works and how well it works. Now, don't be fooled at this point. Uh, we talk to a lot of people about sandblasting and particularly smaller scale stuff. And there's a lot out there in the marketplace to kind of look at in the sandblasting world. So when you're getting into it, begin to realize what you're after. I just talked to a guy on the phone who'd spent $22,000 for sandblasting setup to do signs. He's going to do large scale signs out of wood and sandblast that wood, but he's $22,000 into his equipment already, and he's still got some training that he needs to look at. And then he's got to set up shop and everything else. The same thing's true if you're going into uh, doing headstones or tombstones or all that large scale stuff. I mean, you might could make some money there, there's no question of that, but it's going to be work. And the thing you want to do is, which would you want to do? Sandblast something this size in a cabinet this size or put it into a large scale production? Obviously, this makes a better profitable hobby. Now, our, our whole design, we build the cabinets and put the pressure chambers together and everything. This is really lightweight, so you can move it around easily. A man or a woman, even a child can move it. And all we do is take the cabinet, put this thing inside the pressure chamber. Now, this is just a dust control chamber. And I try and tell my network, as you're moving in from an amateur to a master in these seven steps, if it won't fit in this cabinet, I don't think you should be sandblasting it yet because large-scale blasting like panels for doors and architectural renderings are a liability. Just if it's bigger than this, you should really have to prove to me why you should be sandblasting because I think it's, it's too much. Now, we have some gloves that you put your hands into, obviously, here and protect yourself as you're sandblasting. This keeps the dust from coming back at you. But our whole process here is sandblasting with something that's this small and this size instead of something that's the size of a banana. Let's see if you can actually see the opening and see how small that tiny little opening is there. That's the 220 grit that we shoot. And we don't use aluminum oxide anymore. We use silicon carbide to shoot with because it's so much faster. So now, come in over my shoulder and let me show you just how fast I can etch this thing. This is actually the quickest part of the whole project. Now we're going to start shooting right on the logo so you can kind of go with me and see what's happening. But all I do is turn the pressure on and the sand starts to come out of the pressure chamber and shoot like that. And then I just come in and go right over the surface. And as soon as it's clear, you can tell that all of the glue has gone out of there and you can see it kind of etching into the white and it's clean. Look at the logo here now. As I etch that out of the way, as soon as that glue is gone, then the logo is etched clean. And just that fast, I'm only shooting at 30 pounds of pressure, so any one horsepower compressor and above will drive it. I like little quiet compressors, and we sell a little quiet compressor that will do the job. And then some we've got to control the dust in the whole thing so there's a motor on this cabinet to keep the dust from getting in your house or in your studio but just that quickly now I've etched that whole part then I come down and do the Shakespearean festival here and then I've got to go up and do the flags and I can see the depth it's going to be really hard for you looking over my shoulder but I'm looking at it from an angle so it's a lot easier for me to tell how deep I'm actually cutting. With our high pressure system, it's a micro system, but we've maintained the high pressure so we can actually cut. I could cut a pattern a half inch into this book if I wanted to. Most of our etching is deep cut, so it, it just looks more valuable when people get it. They're just so thrilled with their name cut into a piece of glass or crystal and then done really deep. See how fast that cleans out. As soon as it's cleaned out the glue and cut into the crystal cleanly. And when it's backlit like that, boy, you can see exactly how well it's going. So, and you can also, if you're kind of keeping close track of the time here now, 
I'm going to have maybe three minutes, maybe four, five minutes at the most to cut this whole pattern into this crystal piece and have it all done beautifully. Okay, I'm coming up really close now so you can get a good idea of I'm just about finished and I wanted you to see. It's so fun because you can tell exactly how it's going. When you're sandblasting it, see how you can see it cleaning out the glue? And then you know as soon as it's clean, that's done. And so the blasting part is just so much fun because it's not overly difficult. It does take a learning curve and some practice. It's not a magic little black box, but it's sure doable. And it comes, our kit comes with four hours of video training, so there's a lot here. And we try and go through all the tricks of the trade to help you begin to learn how to do micro sandblasting. I'm getting really tight now. I want to show you one more area because this is where we really specialize. And a micro blaster has got to be able to deep cut. If it just barely fogs the surface, nobody's going to think it's of any value at all. And silicon carbide actually has a unique characteristic. See where it's hitting the surface of the mirror right there? Now watch as I try and cut right through that mirror how fast this little micro blaster can go clear through that mirror. And to me, that's the whole effectiveness of micro blasting. I've cut this deeply into the surface of the crystal book so it's going to just be stunning when it comes out. Now i got to soak it for just about three or four minutes and carefully get this off the surface and then I'll show you it all finished. <laughs> oh, do I like this. Look at this thing. It's turned out absolutely, absolutely gorgeous.